Hello everybody and welcome to another knockoff review. Thanks to the team over at Show Z. In today's video, we're taking a look at another brown box. And these have been in the works for well over a year now. And here we have it out of the box. This is of course the VF1S Strike Valkyrie, the Karu Achio Custom. This is the Strike Valkyrie, uh, designed by Shoji Kawamori. And it's from the movie Macross. Do you remember love? Very, very good movie. The movie itself was basically based on the Macross TV series. And they kind of combined it all into one. And uh, this was the first time we got to see the strike armor, I believe. And it's actually an asymmetrical uh, unit as well uh, came very popular with fans myself included and you may recognize this as the basis for the g1 jetfire toy as well although the colors on jetfire were actually reversed so where the black there's red and where there's red there's black uh, but very very looking forward to getting this i know the official product is still going for about 240 250 dollars I think last time I checked, uh, so very, very happy to have this in hand. Uh, you can't beat a Mauler ROX2A in double barrel beam cannon. And in addition, we also get the baggie with the side pod fillers and the neck seat adapter, which was included with the Arcadia uh, Roy Fockers. And Arcadia released their version of this figure. I don't think they included these pieces as well, which wasn't ever a problem if you already had uh, Roy's version, but uh, if you just wanted this one with the kind of movie accurate hands, etc., and the strike armor, uh, then uh, these are very welcome indeed. Before we get into the ins and outs of the jet mode, let's take a look at the accessories. We get some of these rocket pods, uh, all made to a very high standard. We do get slight overlap there on the paint, but these actually twist into position. We get two of those. We get four of these. We do get some sprue marks just on the top. Doesn't overly bother me because again, that kind of section is gonna be hidden away, but it's just worth noting. We get one of the guns which again is all marked up as U and Spacey. And we've got some really, really small tampo printing on either side. We get the stand plate. I believe this is for the jet mode. Uh, one of these is for the jet mode, one's for Valkyrie, and one's for the girl walk. <laughs> uh, but we get all three attachments. Now we don't get a stand with this set. Uh, shows they actually have this set. They have a set with the armor and they have a set with the stand. And I think the other one is Fokker's uh, one as well. There's loads of different ones coming. You know, they've got loads of different things planned. Uh, but uh, shows is definitely the place to get them from. They're already in stock over there. Now we get Hikaru. Uh, really, really tiny. Considering he's smaller than my nail, he is pretty highly detailed. Fairly good paint applications on there. The red dots could probably be a little bit uh, more precise. And slight bleeding on the top of the helmet. But he is absolutely tiny. We get the movie style plug in hands. So we can do some nice gestures. You've got the trigger finger there, and then we've got kind of a palm strike or very heroic pose. And then of course we get all of the additional armaments as well. Again, lovely attention to detail with the tempos. They've done an excellent job with these. A little bit rough around the edges of that red. 
but everything feels really nicely done. Now this is a 160th and Jetfire, I have been told, was a 155, I think. And he did feel substantially uh, larger and heavier than this. Scale-wise, this is more like a Voyager figure as opposed to a leader class, if you wish. Uh, but it's still very nice nonetheless. Uh, we get the armaments for the arms and legs, all different sections that can peg in to the backs. And again, everything's just got the serial numbers printed on. The attention to detail is really nice. Uh, one of the only sprue marks. This is a very tidy set and they've been done very, very good job indeed. Uh, there's very, very little in the way of overspray with paint and the sprue marks, although there are a couple, they are very, very minute and very difficult to see once you've got this posed up. But I love what they've done. It's just taken them so long to finally get this thing up. Um, got a few uh, <laughs> scuffs on the uh, paint there, but beggars can't be choosers. Now let's get up close and personal with the cockpit. It is done to a very high standard. I don't want to zoom in too much and lose that detailing, but just look, look at the levels that they've gone to. And then we can slide our pilot in, albeit his arms are mine are a little bit higher than what they should be. They're meant to just be resting on the control panels, but we can lock him in there, close that off. Excellent, isn't it? Just overall, the finish and the look and feel of this is very professional indeed it's not uh, i was hoping there'd be more die cast i don't even know if there's any at all uh, other than the screws etc uh, the red dots again slightly sloppier than i would have liked but if you are a robotech or macross fan uh, then this has got to be a must it is a absolutely stunning piece so let's change out some of these pods <laughs> i think they go on that way it's been such a long time since i've messed about with any macross figures at all uh, but yeah you get the idea they all fit under there but this is the jet mode and I absolutely adore it. Now there is space on the underside here. If you choose to, uh, these arms can pull apart. You don't have to get the whole thing transformed up just to do this. You can just pry them apart enough and we can slide his gun down between the two and then they should just push and close in. And that is housed quite centrally underneath and still clear of the wheels. The wheels are probably one of the weakest parts of this set. Uh, the tires aren't quite as central as I would like. I had to actually push this tire here back on when trying to get it out. Uh, these sections fold outwards. The wheels can run in. And as you see, I've got a little bit of wear on the underside there. These are die cast and uh, the paint is um, thinner than I would like. But we can just bring those wheels back down. They can slide in. And bring those back over. Now from here, we can actually add his armor on in his jet mode, in his girl walk mode, and in his Valkyrie mode. The first port of action you need to do is just separate these back legs and just pop this section here upwards. We have this hinge here, which lifts up. These tail fin sections slide outwards, so you get a gap here. I believe this one goes first, and this one goes up and over like this. And then this is gonna come up and over 
onto the top like this. And then we have this panel which can come down. This armory can slide in, pushing and sliding up underneath the back here. And then they're just gonna push and lock into position on the side. Right, coming down to the back of the legs, this section here goes in there and this lips over like so. So you want to push that down and that's gonna push and tab in like this. You want to do this to both sides. So again, hook that lip down and just push and tab that in like so. This is then gonna tab back in to this piece here. Uh, before we do that, we can just bring in We can just bring in these arm cannon pieces. They are just gonna tab these just tab in on either side. We'll bring that in and that in. And just pop pop those pop these arm panel pieces over or on either side they just come in and uh, got a little bit of flex in them just enough to ride them down like so they can just be brought back into the center. Uh, this can then be bent and brought back so that it tabs in to that piece there. These can be brought back in. And then you can just bring in these outer panels and they are gonna push and tab in to the side of that leg armor, just securing nicely onto both sides. And when you fit these arm guards on the underside, make sure that you've got this tab here in the center on both sides. That way we can still tab in our rifle on the underside as well, because obviously these huge cannons and armaments are still not enough firepower wise. So we can just place that in as well and just bring those back together, tabbing everything into position. And it's easier to show you on these because these are much larger. There is a tiny little lip where it curves inwards on both sides here. And there's a rim around here. So you basically need to get these so that they're on the side of the rim and then twist them. And they are very secure indeed. That's the same with all of this weaponry. And of course, if you are a stippler for symmetry, we can just place the replacement piece on like that. So we have the same on both sides. Personally though, I absolutely adore the cannon and loves what it does. It looks absolutely outstanding. But there we go, this is the armament on our jet, uh, we can bring these wheels down if need be again. Uh, but personally, uh, I only have the armor on in his girl walk mode and of course his Valkyrie mode. So let's transform him up into his girl walk. It's pretty easy. We just need to separate those legs from the tab at the top, which is just tabbed into the armor. Now, as much as I would like to say that it's easy to transform it between modes, it's not. Uh, things do tend to come unclipped slightly, uh, but that's partly because uh, this is such a tight fit that when you kind of try to work it out, there's a lip on each hook. So you have to kind of bring it round. Ah, oh, see, I managed to get it down that time without any problems whatsoever, but we can bring the legs down. And as you can see there, the feet are going to split. And I love the fact that these arms just rotate up 
and around there. All the way, just covering off the void. And then it's just gonna to go to the outside like so and slot into position at the feet and they kind of come down and as they come down they separate and just come down further and further and then split forming the solid base there and on the wrists we can flip this up and the fist is meant to just flip down but I have always had trouble with this fist. You really have to kind of just make it work for yourself and bring that all the way down, rotating the wrist as you go. Then you can rotate this around and it's starting to come together. I love the way he pilots that day. He just sat there looking very uh, evasive. And this handle piece separates out and then this can pull down and back which gives us a proper looking handle and then we can just slide this into the hand now there is a tab on the inside like we get with the masterpiece transformer figures it just slides in and then we can just close this off around it and the finger should just clip in like so and there we have the go orc mode now of course uh, the idea is to kind of remove these missiles. Uh, we have the casings that can go over the top of these. I love the fact that lots of these additional pieces come off uh, to give us hidden detailing. Uh, let's show you the armament on the legs. Let's just take this panel off for now. It's just the, a little bit like this, the attention to detailing. love how this all looks so this is his armored girl walk mode uh, now of course from here we can change him up into his robot mode and to do that from this position we want to remove the ammunition from those wings come to the underside and if you look where the head section is this is going to come up on both sides like so, and that's gonna rock all the way down. Bring the arms down and around. The wing panels are gonna slide and they are gonna go to the back underneath that back armor. Now, although I don't think it's essential, I have removed the backpack piece just so we can see what I'm doing here. This part here is slid inside. You need to push it up and remove that. Now it's a really, really tight fit. So I wasn't sure if I was gonna break it or not, but it's at that kind of angle. So you have to kind of bring it up and over the lip. And in doing so, I popped the head off <laughs> my Valkyrie. So I can just pop that back on. There we go, as if by magic, pretend that nothing had happened. But uh, my Valkyrie unfortunately is not without its flaws. I have noticed whilst transforming them that this piece here is actually snapped. It's absolutely gutted. Absolutely gutted that it, that's snapped. It's where a uh, neck piece here was tabbed in. I just lifted it up and it's obviously applied too much pressure onto this tab here, uh, which rotates and unfortunately, as a result, that is well and truly busted. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not gonna pretend that I'm not disappointed, but unfortunately these things do happen. This is the downside to uh, reviewing knockoffs, I guess. Uh, it's just, oh, it's just so annoying though, because it's such a nice piece. Um, we need to slide down his pirate emblem and bring that down to the front like so and then these arms and that are just gonna fold over and come and tab in this piece here is going to open up straighten out 
the legs on both sides, bring those down. The torso panels can then be brought down. This is going to cover off our pilot. And then as we come to the underside here, these tabs just push down in like that, hidden out of the way. And then this bar, which is part and parcel of the crotch, comes, locks in, and then this just closes back off, securing that all into position. Uh, this next step is optional. Uh, you get to put the side pods in. Uh, you're best to move the arm back and rotate the shoulders down. That way you can rock this all the way back and have clean access because there is a hook on the inside there. This is going to slide in and line up with that hook. And then we can just bring the arms back in and that now covers off the inner workings of the chest. And you also get this section on the top here. And as I previously mentioned, we do get the seat, which can go on the top there. And we can have our pilots slide in and out, or we can just get the standard neck piece that goes in here. So you want to just lift this up like so. That now allows us to slide this into that void, locking into position and then rock the head back on there like so. I absolutely adore the sculpt on this. You've got the red dot just offset up there. You've got the paint applications. You've got that really nice translucent green on the head. We have our pilot's insignia on there. Other than my uh, breaking mishap, it is a gorgeous looking figure. You can also just pull out these hands and we can switch and change those out with the kind of movie-esque hands. Now it is a square hole and a circle peg. So just want to give that a push in there and it fits in there quite nicely. Nice dab of yellow on there, although it is literally a dab. It's a lot uh, more untidy than the plastic hands, but these have definitely got a little bit more flex in them, almost rubber-like, but I still wouldn't want to force them into a position they're not designed to go in. And unlike the uh, solid hands, these, uh, you don't have a tab on the inside, but there's kind of a lot of lip there, and you just push this until it goes in, but I love the range of motion you've got with this figure. He does tend to want to tilt backwards, but that's only because I've got him displayed with the S kind of shape up here, which is how you should uh, display your figures if you want to get them in a kind of a dynamic pose. You just have the shoulders slightly offset, the arms slightly bent, uh, the head at a slight angle, and then a kind of S shape around the waist, and then with the feet pointing outwards as well, just to get a little bit of a dynamic look and feel to it. Uh, I do love the fact you've got all of these additional covers. I mean, all of these auxiliary covers are designed to come off just like we got with the premium paint version. So we can take this top piece off. And we can take the cover off the back there as well love the fact that everything kind of moves in here and it's really really clean paint application wise done a really nice job with this and we will just take this off and we'll actually unplug this and then we will place the cannon in like so and just bring that up on that hinge and rock that over like so. And here we have him all posed up. He looks outstanding. Now he is 
only around the kind of seven, seven and a half inch mark. So he is quite a bit substantially shorter than what we get with the original G1 Jetfire. Oh my gosh, it's so nice. What a very, very fine piece indeed. He really does look the part. It's such a shame about that rear panel at the back. The trouble with buying one of these is that you kind of feel obliged to get the rest. I used to love Robotech or Matt Cross, depending on where you were in the world. It was an amazing animation, especially considering that like, the movie was out in the 80s and the fight sequences alone were out of this world. They were brilliantly animated. Uh, people going at it hammer and tongs and it was really well choreographed. Uh, but what a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Love the cannons on the head. Love the fact that they are individually articulated. You can bring those down and up as you see fit. We do have upwards motion on the helmet and down as well as a pivot up and down on the neck and a rotation. Uh, not really much tilt in there though. The shoulders, we have articulation on the shoulder pad. They can come out to the side on the butterfly joint. Then we have rotation. We have that ability to go up and down. There's an upper bicep rotation. And not one, but two bends on those elbows. We've got rotation and up and down and pivot on these wrists. There's nothing on the waist as such, but the legs can rock inwards and outwards on the thigh. We have a bend at the top of this leg here. We also get a rotation at the upper knee. There is also not one, but there is two joints on the knee. There's a rotation just within the joint. And then we get the up and down below. I love the fact that the armament just kind of disappears on the inside. That's a really nice touch. So we get the two forms of rotation. So you can tilt it outwards and then around. And then as for the feet, they can go up and down on ratchets. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't really get a lot of tilt on those feet as such, which is a shame because I do like to tilt my bot's feet. But you can get away with that by kind of just angling the hip, bringing the knee down and kind of twisting it slightly. There's enough kind of flex in there to bring that all the way down. Wonderfully striking figure with amazing balance. You've got so many options when posing this uh, really well balanced. Love the armaments, uh, one of my favorite from the line thus far. And it's a line that I am going to go in as deeply as I can financially afford to because I am a huge fan of these. I missed the original releases. And with these being as high quality as they are, and for the price that they are, uh, I would be absolutely mad to miss these again. Thank you all for watching. Once again, I'd like to thank Shozi for making this review possible. I've included a link to this and the other Valkyries on their site in the description below. And until next time, from myself and Hukaru's Strike Valkyrie Custom, ah, uh, goodbye.